Hi, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name, talking about the Fourth Amendment. One more soundbite before we go to the phones. This is Rand Paul, the son of Ron, and he is he's dialed in. Remember, I talked with you about the fact that one of the things that makes the Fourth Amendment distinctive is that it was specifically like the Third Amendment. Remember, the Third Amendment says you can't be forced to quarter troops in your house. Where in the world did that come from? Well, that's what the Crown was doing to the colonies and said, we're not going to have a central government that's going to do that to us. So that was rooted in our history with the crown. So it was the fourth amendment because they had these general warrants. They could barge into anybody's home anywhere at any time for any reason, looking for contraband. And we, the people said, Nope, not going to happen in the United States of America. We have a constitutional prohibition against that kind of uh, baseless, unreasonable searches. And here's Rand Paul He's, he's doing the historical bit of connecting the Fourth Amendment to what went on in history at the time. Let's listen. Well, you know, they're looking at a billion phone calls a day, is what I read in the press, and that doesn't sound to me like a modest invasion of privacy. It sounds like an extraordinary invasion of privacy. The Fourth Amendment says that you have to look at, and you can ask for a warrant for a specific to a person, place, and the items. This is a general warrant. This is what we objected to. And what our founding fathers partly fought the revolution over is they did not want generalized warrants where you could go from house to house with soldiers looking for things or now from computer to computer to phone to phone without specifying who you're targeting. So uh, Rand Paul correctly connecting this to the history of what happened in the period leading up to the Declaration of Independence and our war to protect and preserve our independence. And don't forget that the, the war between the United States and England was a, on our part, was not a rebellion. It was a battle in which we were defending our national sovereignty. We had declared ourselves July 4, 1776, that we are and of right ought to be a sovereign state, sovereign, uh, sovereign nation among all the states of the world. We were at that point we were the United States of America. We had declared our independence. So from that point forward, the invader was England. The crown was invading our sovereign territory. This wasn't a rebellion. We were defending American soil. It was a defensive battle. It was not a rebellion. Don't let anybody lie to you or tell you differently about it. Well, let's go to the phones, 888-589-8840. Let's start with Majin in DeBerry, Texas. Majin, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? <laughs> First of all, bless you. Well, bless you. But I just want the American people to know we've got to repeal some past articles in our Bill of Rights here and in our Constitution. Woodrow Wilson, when they tried to convince us that there was so much corruption we had to elect our own senators, you took away our right to stop the federal government from passing laws that we, the people, do not agree with. Uh, then they topped it off with Eisenhower, where he gave the District of Columbia the right to vote. You had Mr. Gomart on the air during the holidays, and we heard him say each issue that your host asked him about, the IRS and all these things you're bringing up. Every time Mr. Gomart said, when he'd say, what can we do about it? Mr. Gomart said, District of Columbia, District of Columbia judges. District of Columbia. Now, that's what Eisenhower did, and we've got to repeal these amendments so that we, the people, have the power that our forefathers gave us in that Constitution. We're supposed to have that power over the federal government and the state. Mm -hmm. But when we lost our right, because we elected our representatives, yeah. and our representatives chose the senators, Okay. Right. That meant if those senators up there in Washington weren't doing what we wanted them to, we could threaten our representatives, say, you're not going to be in office. We're going to remove you unless you get these guys out of there because we don't agree with this law. Yeah. We don't want it. Well, Magina, I Wilson and Eisenhower took those rights away from us. Our voting rights belong to the Democratic and Republican Party. So you're, uh, I want to be clear uh, just about Eisenhower. Your objection is that Eisenhower led the effort to give the franchise, give the power to vote, the authority to vote to people that live in the District of Columbia. That's, That's your... right, and he was not supposed to, and okay. we are not supposed to be choosing our own senators. That's where we lost right. our power. Now that's what I want, and, that's, and I appreciate the call, Majin. Thank you. And I, I agree with what, what she is saying. I think the 17th Amendment 
That's the one that provides for the direct election of senators, a bad amendment. A lot of the amendments, I wouldn't say all of them, but a lot of the amendments since the 10th are, are bad amendments. I don't, I don't agree with the 22nd Amendment, term limiting the president. I think somebody that wants to be president ought to be able to run as often as they want to. That's what elections are for. That's how you limit terms is you vote people out of office. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not in favor of the 22nd Amendment. I'm with those who would like to see that uh, repealed. And I definitely am for repealing the 17th Amendment. What Bajim was talking about is prior to the 17th Amendment, the senators were chosen by the state legislatures. The state legislatures would pick the two people who were going to represent their state in the United States Senate. And this was in part to make sure that the states and the right of states was protected because they would have two senators that would be looking out for the interest of each state. The House of Representatives, they were looking out directly for the interest of the people. Their responsibility wasn't to their state. Their responsibility was to the people in their district. They represented the people. And our founders said, look, we got to make sure there's somebody looking out for the interests of each state. That's going to be the U.S. Senate. And the way we're going to make sure that they protect and look out for the interests of the states is we're going to have the state legislatures pick them. So they would be directly accountable then to the state legislatures. If they didn't operate in a way that protected the interests of, of their state, then the legislature, they knew that the state legislatures could turn them out of office. didn't matter uh, because they were the ones that would decide. So when that was taken away and it became a direct election of the senators, the states, my contention is that at that point, the states lost a valuable, valuable source of protection and representation. And so I, I'd be completely in favor of repealing uh, the 17th Amendment. All right, good call, Magin. I appreciate that. Uh, the, the voting in D.C., that I'd have to think about. I'm not real exercised, uh, as exercised as Magin is. Uh, over that, but that would bear some further scrutiny. Let's go to Anthony, Columbus, Mississippi. Uh, Anthony, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Brian, I don't know if you saw the movie Enemy of the State. Oh, Smith, you, you Jack, know, I'm telling you, I tell you, what, I tell you, Anthony, I'll tell you something. I'm going to go back and watch that movie again because that is spooky just how uh, prescient that movie was. What Anthony's talking about is an old Gene Hackman movie. I'm trying to remember who else. Oh, yeah, Will Smith was in that. And, yep. uh, and, and again, it, it just and kind of describes the capacity of the state to exercise surveillance on American citizens. Anyway, go ahead, Anthony. Remember, John Voigt was in charge of the NSA yeah. when it all started. And now look at what we're going through and what's being revealed. It's just an unfolding that the Lord is showing what's happening in this country. Yeah. So, the people need to think about that. Yeah. So That's what, what I have for you. Okay, so what, 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 what you're saying, Anthony, is that you think that uh, through this process of these scandals that some of the truth about what this administration has been up to is now coming to light, and that's, and that's a good thing to have that exposed. Mm -hmm. Because look at what's happening. The phone you know, company is being told they got to give up their customers' information. Why would national security need that from its own citizens? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate the call. Thank you for that. Thank you, Anthony. By the way, the, the, the sales of George Orwell's book, he wrote the book 1984, and the sales of his book have gone up 6,884% in the last 24 hours. It's the fourth rast, uh, fastest rising sales book on Amazon, the 184th most popular book right now on um, Amazon. All right, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Scott in Biloxi, Mississippi. Scott, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, man, uh, I'm, I'm from Mississippi, as I told the screener, but I'm actually in Oklahoma. I'm a truck driver, okay? All right. Uh, yeah, so anyways. Um, I'm and, and Scott, I'm telling you, I am glad that you told me that because we, we are tapped into the NSA servers, and if you were telling us you were from Biloxi and – and the NSA told us you were in Oklahoma. We were going to have to have a serious conversation about that. So I'm, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll try to condense everything because I have a huge story. But um, my wife, she's a Vietnamese citizen. She's a of her life. Um, I went there and lived in the country for almost four years. And I've had thousands um, I don't know how many thousands of phone calls in the past four years. 
go all over the world, uh, from the United States to that country, from that country to the United States, sometimes Cambodia, the, any of the surrounding Asian nations over there by Vietnam. But uh, as I was telling your screener, what a shame it would be for me to find out that the government had been listening to some of the intimate phone calls that I've had with my wife. I mean, we talk about, we talk about the Lord. We talk about politics government, everything. And in that country, let me contrast freedom real quick for you. I lived for nearly four years. In that country, those people claim they have freedom, but as an American who has witnessed freedom, they have absolutely no freedom over there, and they are under the thumb of the government. And if this country wants to, if the government of this country wants to continue, you know, these things like they're doing with the NSA, it, it'll wind up like that country over and what basically what you'll have is a is, is an oppressed nation, yeah. and um, the people over there they cannot express their opinions. They don't have freedom of speech like we do here. So I, I've often wondered since this whole NSA scandal thing, I've often wondered if her government is monitoring our phone calls, and is the United States government mon monitoring our phone calls, and are, are they are they communicating with one another about you know what my wife and I are talking about? Yeah. Because when we have political conversations. There's some unkind things that are said. Yeah. We agree with each other 100%. But All right, Scott. Well, listen, Obama you know, and, and I appreciate your call, uh, call uh, Scott. Thank you for, for that call. You know, and Scott would be a perfect example of, of the concern here because he's calling Vietnam. He's calling Thailand. And, of course, that maybe is not an, as much of an issue today as it might have been a generation ago where Vietnam was a declared uh, enemy. Uh, and so he would come under completely unreasonable suspicion just for making phone calls. So, uh, you know, and, and that's why we had, I, I read you the excerpt from a number of left-wing publications, the United States starting to resemble East Germany instead of the USA. Back after five. Stay with us. American Family Radio.